Mark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome, Christian, who will tell you something about what data centers and vending machines can have in common. The stage is yours. Hi. So, this is working really well. So, my name is Christian Kruger, and I'm working in Berlin, and I'm also associated with BKIC, so you see our logo on that. Um, and this is a bit uh, small here, so I will try to mess around with my papers, and we will see how that's going on. Um, I'm talking about uh, an old story of mine uh, that I've been pursuing for quite some years. Uh, I've been crawling around in, uh, in a few data centers in Berlin uh, since long, long before 2015, and um, I happened to meet quite some guys. Um, but before going to that, I may just show you exactly what we're talking about, and I hope that the picture is working a bit, well, maybe a bit. Um, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the data center centric, and I, yes, I will read that data center centric vending machine. It's consistent of 169 small to large lockers. It has a credit card processor, has a touch screen, bill and coin payment possibilities, flexbox inside, and no, it's not distributed anywhere, and I'm not selling it. Um, that thing does quite some, does quite some put out. 169 products seemed quite a lot honestly in the end it wasn't but it got some cables it has cleaners different optics materials label document fix some tools and measurement equipment and now we're through with all that because i'm not here to sell the machine and therefore we can go on the road that brought us there in 2015 i was running around the data since in berlin um like mostly i would say Minimum 80% of uh, everybody in this room, I happened to stand somewhere inside a maintenance window asking for something I didn't have. Let's call them screws. So I was screwed looking for screws. And uh, I, I, I was happy because I, I've always been a cautious guy, so I looked into my bag, I looked in my car, I was happy to find some, everything's great. Until the next time. Well, in the end, Every storage you have is endless. Endless like it's end. And therefore, next time I was looking for screws, I was screwed and I had no screws. I was also happy again. That's why I can tell the story so happily. And because I just ran to the data center operator and Stefan helped me out, gave me a few screws, so I wasn't screwed anymore. And I had some cables as well, everything nice. I could go on. I really love this timer here. Maybe that speech is going to be a bit longer. But there came this nagging thought. What next time? What do you do in the middle of the night? What helps you out? Who helps you out? Where do you have to go when you're looking for something in the middle of the night? Honestly, be, be helpful. Who of you have stood somewhere in a data center, screwed looking for anything you don't have? Raise your hand. Thank you. I know why I'm here. So, considering storage in cars, what's the first thing we do? We fill our, our bags, we fill our, our, our whatever, our luggage, our, our coff the coffins we carry around. Then we fill our cars, and that's the end of it. Because in the end, the only thing we take with us is our cars. Cars can be pretty filled up. Mine was. So, Again, the nag came. You will hear me talking about nagging things all the time. So I got this uh, fixed idea of how do, you, how, how do you solve this? I never did. I got through stages of escalations for various customers in various situations over many years. And by the time this, this thought just came up and I was like, okay, if you could buy something like that, like... Is there any, any type of machine you can use? And I was thinking, like, we all know this from the train station, where this spiral automate, the, the, the vending machines that are just putting out your snacks or whatever. And so a lot of thoughts later, I was quite sure, whatever I do, this is not going to work. Why? Because you want 100% well, you deliverability. You want it put out. There is no question about that you need to deliver 100%. Okay, drop it, 
Six months later, nagging comes again. In the meantime, well, I, I will skip the story about the rack drawers because I'm quite sure the customers in the data center had this discussion about how much paper, how much burnable material you can store inside a rack to get along things you need all the time. We won, we built in drawers. And in the end, we lost with the drawer idea as well because drawers are very small. We have, your, we have our racks because we want to put service there and not any, any screws. So I had a very nice talk. I was talking to Thomas from Flex Optics and I told him about my nagging idea. How about having a machine doing that? Giving us a few tools, a few cables, some screws, a more cable, then a few optics. Well, maybe you could put an optic programmer in. So he was, yeah, Christian, that's a good idea. That's called Giromat. We already dropped the idea a few years ago. Okay. So I was done, honestly. I just thought the idea is totally wasted. If somebody like Flex Optics is not going to work that out, how am I? I wasn't. And then again, I'm really getting low on time. That's good. Uh, then again, I got this call. Uh, yeah, Christian, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm working with this, with this hyperscaler, and we need to get the uh, very, very small installation of a few megawatts uh, running. Can you help us out? Because the guys just forgot to place their 1G out-of-band optic. And I was, what the fuck? <clears throat> I'm not, not telling you. What? Yeah, I, I need a Cisco-coded 1G LX, otherwise this thing's not going to run. I was, I was stuck in the end of this project, and I, I knew this is going to hurt me. So I, I was interested to help out. Also, I dropped everything, got in the car, took a few flex optics, delivered the flex optics. Everything was nice. Everybody was happy. Four weeks later... I received that same Flex Optics optic again. And now I'm not making any advertisements for them. I just love them. And a written short note, we only use originals. <laughs> Maybe there would have been the possibility to, to add thank you for your help. But I, I'm not so fond of that. <sighs> then I got again to the thing, what if? All this nagging. I got 2.30 left and I will be really quick. But this nagging never stopped. And I was talking all this through with a very dear friend, very, very good colleague in the data center business in Berlin. And he also found the idea quite nice. Um, the thing is, most of you will know, if you get caught up, if you've gotten caught up with an idea that is not leaving you, it will not stop. Either you will be very unsatisfied with the outcome of something that you didn't realize, or it will not stop. Therefore, I looked up machine vendors, delivery systems, and so on. Every, every once in a while, it wasn't like I was working on that ages and months, every, every time, every year I had like a few weeks of work. No, it was like from time to time, you were spending a few hours. So I talked to Peter and we talked things through. We, uh, we wasted the idea with the, with the spirals. And over the time and a lot of talks and the, to be honest, tragic loss of said friend, I, in the end, stood there with his uh, colleague in, uh, in the data center in Berlin. Well, this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is located in NTT GDC Web 1. By one. Um, and he said, well, I, 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 we are still open to that. So, skipping a few things because I only have a minute left. Um, I sat there late in the night on the couch, like 10 o'clock in front of the television, and I was sitting there with an offer from this Chinese vendor with the very, very interesting talk we had. His English not being good, my Chinese being even worse. And overly told it my wife. I said, well, yeah, this and that, we could do it. And well, it's costing quite a, but okay. And she said, well, by God, do it. 
you will never stop. This will always nag you. And that's the only reason why this machine today is where it is. And I got only five seconds. One thing I will, I will ask for 20 seconds. One thing I would remind you of, if you ever get to the interest of importing anything from China, from people that do not understand you, with like no CE connected to it, knowing nothing about customs, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> This was a few weeks before that thing stood. What I would like to tell you is, all this was quite a challenge. I'm wrapping up. Yes, Stefan, was quite a challenge. This project cost me dearly, and I mean dearly. Others could have bought a car for that. It cost me my nerves, time, even more time. Will it make me rich? To be honest, uh, I can guarantee you not. It will not. The ROI will maybe start in 2035. But I didn't do it for the money prospectively. But it also gave me, and that is something I have to thank you all for, it gave me joy, it gave me insight, gave me dedication to the project. It gave me quite some experience to deal with things that looked like they are from the 90s. And it gave me quite some applause from our Berlin colleagues and the opportunity to tell my story here today. Thank you.